All right, does this work? Let's see. I see myself. All right, I see myself. I can talk, testing. There we go, I see it testing. Oh, I see the light. That's nice. There we go, that's cool. Uh, I put some hearts there, that's nice. <laughs> Beautiful. That's so cool. Welcome. I, I'm not sure if anyone else is here. So if I have someone that replies, that would be great. Um, let me just take a look. Is anybody else there? Oh, I see one. There we go. So nobody's listening right now, so forgive me. This is like my first time trying to do Facebook Live. Um, I'm waiting for the first person to show up and that person to ask a question. And hopefully I'm able to provide an answer. So right now it's just me. Let's see if anyone else shows up. Ooh, nobody. Interesting. We will wait. Oh, somebody's there. Okay, now Sin, are you are you there? Sir, if you want your YouTube video promotion and ranking, please knock me. Give me one chance, sir. Um sure now Sin. What 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 would you like me like what 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 could you do for me? Like YouTube is very I I'm I honest I don't understand YouTube. I don't understand making videos. That's why I'm trying to do this. <laughs> uh, but thank you. I appreciate what you're trying to do. This is very interesting. I'm I'm gonna read a book while I wait for more people to come. I guess. Which is very interesting. What book should I read? I think I should go for this one. Oh, we got more people. There we go. Itarbu, please just one chance. Um, and now, Sin, if you if you like, you can try to look on my YouTube channel. Uh, it's Sidewider Inc. I will show you my YouTube channel, my friend. One moment. Uh, I'm doing it on my phone. <laughs> There you go, my friend. Oh, thank you. Who else is there? Ay, ay, ay. So how can I see if there's other people in here? Because I didn't see you. And I also don't see who is in the channel with me, which is very exciting, actually. Thank you, my friend. Namaste. Hmm. So I'm gonna I'm gonna be here for one and a half hours. Um, so let's take a look if anyone else shows up. It seems whenever I move away from the screen, it will deactivate it. That's pretty cool. That's pretty nice. Okay. So whenever I try to take my phone, if I try to take my phone away from the screen. It seems that it deactivates the Facebook Live. Tap to invite a viewer to be in your broadcast. Ooh! Tap to invite a viewer to be in a broadcast. Ah, hey Dominique! Thank you! Thank you! Do you have any questions for me? Like, I'm still trying to learn how, how we can use Facebook Live as a tool to create awareness. It's all new for me. 
So I'm hoping that you have insights for me and I maybe have insights for you. If you have any questions about the upcoming book or if you have any questions in general about me or about you or anything like that, this is a place where we can share. Thank you, Nausin. Um, so now, Sin, what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to publish my book. Um, my book is being released very soon. Uh, I have a Kickstarter up. And this Kickstarter is ending in three days. And I still need to get 999 euros. I'm pretty sure I'm not able to achieve that at this time because I lack the knowledge to market myself. But I might need you once I publish the book. Does that sound good for you, now, Sin? So when I publish the book, we can use your services? Are you able to make a nice trailer? How are you do doing, Dominique? Is everything okay? Is everything okay with you, Dominique? You have a good day? Interesting. It's a little weird looking at yourself. Ah, looks better. Hmm. So what shall we talk about? Does anyone have any stories? Anyone would like to talk about my book or talk about me or talk about you? This is the place. Thank you, Dominique. And don't be sorry that it's loud outside or you can't hear me. I'm thankful that you are here and that you are part of the journey. I hope you're having a good time with your friends. And thank you for wishing me the best. I appreciate it. And we have another person coming in. Welcome. Welcome. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Uh, this is about my upcoming book or about me. If you have any questions about what it's about or um, what the meaning of it is, you can always ask. I'm very curious how you think. Thank you, Israel. Thank you. Israel, is, is there do you have any questions for me? Do I pronounce your name in the right way? Uh, now, Sin, I, I will reach out to you once the universe decides I should reach out to you, my friend. So... If, if I feel inclined to reach out to you, I will reach out to you. But for now, I should be fine. Maybe after I release my book. Hey, Kevin, my man. I see more and more people are joining. Great. Great to have you on this journey, my man. I love it. Do you have any questions for me? Uh, this is like my first time trying this. So I, I, I need to see like how this works. I'm waving at you as well. <laughs> So basically this is just to like have like see if there's any questions about me or about the book or anything you like to know or if you want to talk about yourself you can talk about yourself. I'd love to know where you're from and what you're doing and what kind of insights you want to share. Like we are all here for sharing, right? So I'm here learning from you as as this is my first time doing Facebook live. And maybe this is your first time interacting with someone on Facebook, which is also very interesting. And we see how it goes. So please tell me how to keep myself safe from my friends who want to hurt me secretly. So how do you know they want to hurt you secretly, Israel? If they want to hurt you, why would they not do it? Why would they not hurt you like in front of you? 
Or is it maybe in your mind that they want to hurt you secretly? I'm very curious what your answer will be to that. How to keep myself safe from my friends who want to hurt me secretly. Thank you, Arvind. Do you see anything about me that is unhealthy? Um, is there something about me that you have like the insight like, oh, that looks unhealthy. Maybe you need some work with that. I think I'm pretty healthy. I have a lot of pain in my, um, like my, uh, how do you call this, my elbow. And I have a little bit of pain on my left foot because I get hit by a car. So that's the only pain I'm feeling in regards to health. But I, for the rest, I feel very healthy. I'm healthy with energy. I'm healthy with my mind. So um, I'm, I'm pretty sure that I'm quite healthy. The mind, especially, the mind looks like it's, it's, it's great. It's, doing, it's like... Bliss, it's in a state of bliss. How's your health, Arvind? And Israel, if you have uh, any any more questions, like, did I, like, do they try to secretly hurt you or do you believe that they secretly try to hurt you? What's this the one? What's the answer to that question? Okay, thank you for sharing that, Israel. And it takes a lot of courage. So you said that recently you heard that somebody wants to hurt you, but you didn't hear the name of that person. Okay, does that make you feel scared? Does that frighten you? Because if, if you're frightened by an outside source, that, that I understand that that might feel very scary. But is it, is, it, is it something scary that's in your mind or is it something scary that is reality? That's the question. So what I believe for death is that it's just another beginning. So when you, when you die, there will be a new beginning. And this new beginning, is, it's, it's very uncertain because who died and then was able to tell about it? I almost died. I had a near-death experience. And what I, what I saw is that life didn't want to let me go. Uh, it gave me new life. It showed me a completely different perspective on how to see the world. So after I died, um, I was able to understand that we all live in an illusion and death is not the ultimate ending. It is just a new beginning. Um, our spirit will live on and I believe our spirits uh, will live on in the karmic system. So everything we could not learn from this life, we will learn in a new life. And if we don't learn that lesson in a new life, we will keep going back until we learn the lesson. So that's what I believe about uh, dying and our energy and spirit. If we don't fulfill our dreams this time, we have to try to fulfill it next time. And which is why also why suicide does not work. Because if you suicide, you kill yourself. And it, it seems easy for this life, but you will encounter it again in your next life. You will again encounter the same difficulties that you're feeling right now. You will also have in your next life as well. And then you're going to kill yourself again. And then you're going to kill yourself again. Why, why would you do that? It doesn't make sense. Life is made for overcoming obstacles. And if you run into an obstacle and, and you feel like you have to kill yourself, then, then you are going to run into an obstacle again in the next life. And you're going to do it again. And you will be always in a never-ending circle, circle, girl, circle. So it's very important to learn how you can overcome your obstacle. Hopefully that answers your question, Kevin. And welcome, my love, Agnes. Uh, or I would say your secret name, Holiday. I'm sorry. It's all about the anonymity. That is true, Kevin. The key to the meaning of life is just be happy. That is the meaning of life. We're not here to suffer. We are here to overcome. We're not here to like live in pity and live in hurtfulness 
that we are here to learn how to first understand what pain is so we know what the opposite of pain is. We know what happiness is. That's why you suffered in your life. That's why you suffer because you just don't understand what happiness is if you don't suffer. Uh, do I say that I want suffering? No, I hate suffering. I don't like suffering. I like to just enjoy my life always. Uh, but many people are living in suffering. They're living in a sea of darkness. And um, with my book, I hope to reach those people that believe that they are stuck, that believe that they are inside of a prison of their own mind and try to get them out, showing them a path. Not deep path. It doesn't have to be deep path, but it, it is another path to get out of the darkness of your mind. All right. Any other questions out there? Thank you all for already watching and thank you for asking the questions that you asked. And I also still need to hear from you, my friend. What is your name again? Israt, I still need to hear from you, man. I still need to hear what, what, what you believe about the person that's trying to hurt you. I'm very curious why you believe people are trying to hurt you. Let me see if I can get more comfortable. I, I'm a little bit uncomfortable right now. Let me just turn on the light. I turn on the light and maybe I should go on Lotus. Like that. There we go. All right, this is more comfortable. Or is it? Hmm. You'll see. It's a beautiful day though. I'm surrounded by a lot of work, a lot of reading. If I can show you how, how my workspace look like, maybe you're interested. Let's take a look. Yeah, there we go. Oh, there's even a light. That's cool. So here I have my library. And this is my book of learning. I have a lot of... Well, actually, this is not my book. This is my administration. So basically, I have my intentions here. Every day, I write down a letter of my intentions. Like what I'm going to do. Ah, oh, great question, Kevin. Thank you. Um, so I will go back to my face. Let's see if I can do that. Okay, my face is back there. Yes. All right. So my intentions, my plans for the future is to create a better world with a stronger you in it. That's basically my messaging right now. So what I intend to do is to create a better world with sharing knowledge to create a better version of yourself. So if you read my book, you will notice that there's nothing there about religion. There's nothing there about following somebody else. Uh, and my book will describe how you can follow yourself. And that sounds weird because you always love to hear all the voices telling you what to do and that makes life easy. Like in, in school you will learn that you have to uh, like study for this test and after you got this test you got your diploma and once you got your diploma you can have your job and once you have your job you can have your wife or your child or whatever. And you have your, your, your whole family that goes into the house and in, in the house you move to the pension and then that's life. That's what they try to teach you because that's easy because you like to hear what other people tell you what should be the truth. But what I'm going to show you is that the only person that really cares about you is you. The only person that really knows who you are is you. Somebody else can have a good, like a good mind, like a good experience who you might be, but they still can't really say who you are. Some people are very strong empaths, so they're able to feel your emotions, but they can still not see who you really are. And the only one that can really tell the truth, tell the truth to you, is yourself. You can be so brutally honest to yourself that you can learn from that. Don't believe that you are doing good. Don't believe that you're doing wrong. You just do what is good for you. And that is why many people, they go to church and they go... Um, like for example, they go like go to the preacher and they tell their truths and they say, oh, father, I have sinned and I did this and this and that. And he says, oh, I forgive you and everything is fine. And they're like, oh, everything is fine. That's good. But is everything fine? Is what you did really true? Is what you did really something good that you did or something bad that you did? You have to ask that for yourself. One thing I love from this guy, from this guy is very cool. 
Code of the Extraordinary Mind. Um, he teaches that tradition is basically peer pressure from dead people. Tradition is peer pressure from dead people. Exactly. Society cannot dictate what you believe. Society cannot dictate what you believe. Because your society could be a wrong society for you. Um, if you're living... Well, this one is actually much better, in my opinion, than Tony Robbins. But this is my opinion, of course. Um, I believe that Tony Robbins should not be charging that much money for his courses. Um, that's too much. Not many, many people can pay for his stuff. If he's able to make it cheaper, then I believe that he's really trying to make the world better. But for now, it seems that he kind of got overtaken by greed. But it, I don't live in that world, so I cannot judge. I'm not allowed to judge, so I'm not sure. Maybe it is. It just, I just have that feeling. Um, so, yeah, I don't know why you have to pay like 6,000, 700 euros, 7,000 euros for just getting help, getting out of your bad mindset. It's It's... Maybe it makes you more motivated, but it does not work for me. Maybe it makes you more motivated, but it doesn't work for me. I, I admire the man, though, because he really tries to help you. He really tries to make the world a better place, which I really, really love. It's just that the money he charges for it, not many people can pay for that. And then he says, well, if you are really want to do it, then you are able to find the money to do it. But it's a lot of money. It's a big step. I'm pretty sure he's able to help you, but it's just so much money. It's it's crazy. Like, I, I want to work with Tony Robbins as well. It is. Um, I, I I spend a lot of money on self help as well. So I spent I spent a lot of money. Like I think I spent like eight thousand euros on self help programs. Uh, but they do not like in the end. I, they do not work for me. Uh, first of all, because they probably like their story says they've been in your situation and they know how it feels like to be sad and once they are able to say hey we know how it feels like to have no money and then if you pay us a lot of money we can show you how to make money and then you go into that program but they don't show you how to really make money they show you how you can be a better you which is good but some people they are so stuck in not being a better version of themselves that they're not able to really help themselves so what I'm trying to do as well is, is promote the programs that I believe in because there are many of those programs are actually quite good. It's just that some, sometimes those programs are not made for you. They are made for somebody else. So they, they, they believe that you need it, but sometimes you really don't need it. You don't need their help. They try to help, but you don't need their help, which is very important to learn as well because I made a lot of mistakes in that. I made a lot of mistakes which I am more than happy to tell you about, all those mistakes. And from those mistakes I learned, and that's why I write my book, to make sure that people don't make the mistakes that I made. Oh, I forgot what the question was. What was the question? Well, so what are my plans for the future? Oh, sorry, Kevin. So let me get back to the question. Um, <laughs> the, qu the plan for the future is to create a better you. Um, to do that... Uh, I released my book, so my book is one of the things, exactly, it, it's a lifetime work, it is, it's, it, never, it, it never ends, you can always make a better you, it never ends, but I want to help those people that are stuck in their mind, they're really stuck, they, they, they believe that everything is against them, I want to help those people, so when, when I make my book, it's for the people that are lost, because I, I had a psychosis, and I had a depression, and this depression and psychosis was caused by outside influences, or at least my perception of outside influences. And I overcome it by becoming a better version of me. So I took responsibility for my suffering. I took responsibility for the pain that I was in. I did not blame anyone else but me for my suffering. And once I did that, I, I became free. I, I, I basically saw that if I could forgive those people that hurt me in the past, my bullies, the people that abused me or in any way, I could, if I could forgive them in my heart, I am taking responsibility. I, I forgive them for what they did because they did not know what they were doing. They were ignorant of what they were doing. If they knew they were hurting me and they were 
like if they knew who I was, which would be just them, I, I, I am them, they would not be hurting me like they did. They would, they would understand that they should never hurt another person. They should never harm another person. Never let that other person feel pain. And that's what I'm trying to show in the book. Uh, the book describes that you are everybody. So you need to treat everybody like you are treating yourself. And I mean that literally and figuratively. I, I, I literally think, I literally believe, I actually know that we are all one. We are all the same. We are all fragments of the same consciousness. So if you harm yourself, you harm yourself. Like if you harm somebody else, you are actually harming yourself. Um, maybe one day, once you reincarnate, you will be that person that you're hurting. Or maybe you were that person already in the past that you were hurting. So it's very, like once you understand that everybody is you, you would never harm another person again. You would never hurt another person again. And that's why I believe that my book will create a better world. And by all believing that we are all one, we are able to make this world so much better than it is already. We are able to give kindness and love and compassion to people that are not going by faster. So if people are, have like some learning disabilities at school, we can teach them that they don't have to learn like, they, like the other children are learning. They can learn in a different way. We can show them they can still be part of society even though the rest of society cast them out. We can show them that they are part of us. They, we, they are still part of us, even though they believe they are not. I want to make sure that everybody gets along on the train. We all head to the same journey. We all head to the same destination. We all do it together, everybody. Even the people that hurted other people, they can still change. They can still change their ways. We can still forgive them and let them do good things. And that's basically what the book describes. Um, how you can take responsibility for yourself and forgive others, show compassion to others, and free yourself by doing so. And I still need to give you an example what I want to do with this. So I released a book. Um, after the book is released, um, I am going to try to use marketing to sell the book. Um, I'm also going to do uh, affiliate marketing, which basically means that I will promote products that I believe in so people can also buy it and I will get commission from that. Um, that is one of the ways I try to monetize my future uh, money. But right now I'm living on government, government aid. Right now I'm only relying on the government to pay my salary. Um, life coach. Who am I to say what life is? Um, I don't believe I can control life, so I'm not a life coach. What I can be is a mindset coach, so I can change your mindset, or I can be a transformational coach. I can transform your current self into a desired self. So I'm able to transform your mind. Um, so I can be a transformational coach, or I can be a mindset coach. I, I think I would fall, fall in the category of transformational coach. And transformation coach is also good for me because then we focus on a result. A life coach, just life is not a result. Trans a transformation is a result. So I would say a transformational coach. I, I teach people how to make sure they don't listen to that monkey all the time. So what I call the ego is called the monkey. And a monkey, monkey sees, monkey does. Monkey just keep on jumping around, jumping around in your brain. It hears something and it's like, oh, listen to that. And then it hears something else and it's like, oh, listen to that. But if you can train your monkey to only listen to good things, and if you train your monkey not to listen to bad things, then you can control your life. And that's what I did with my monkey. I have a friend monkey now. And, well, Kevin, for you, you are one of my monkey friends. I keep telling you that because you are a monkey, uh, Chinese, Chinese monkey which I always appreciate about you because somehow I always attract monkeys as my friends. Oh, like most of my friends are monkeys. Like uh, Gasper is a monkey, Boss is a monkey, you are a monkey. The father of my girlfriend is a monkey. He's a very good guy. There's so many monkeys in my life. I love it. I love monkeys. They're good. I just met a monkey today as well uh, at a friend's house. Uh, I was visiting her today with her family and one of the one of the guys there was a monkey as well. 
and uh, it was fun, it was nice. He, he had a good mind, I liked his mind. He had a very analytical mind, very logistic mind that always thinks in logic. Which is which can be a good mind can also can also like limit you as well if you have a lot like a logical mind because if you always think in logic at some point the spirituality will break your logic and then your mind will be broken and you don't want to break your mind it happened to me I, I always try to look at everything with logic and then one day I did not see logic anymore and my mind got broken and the good thing about a broken mind is that you can put it back together in a better way. So I broke my mind with psychosis and then my new mind is so much better than my old mind, which is like, I believe everything now. I believe in all. Everything is, is just so beautiful. And I, I believe I, I want to show this to everybody as well. So like when, when, you, when I release my book, you will see the book is like, whoa, this guy believes in everything. And how can he, how can he still function if he believes in everything? Which is, which is, which everything makes sense to me. Like, like if I hear something, I'm like, oh, that makes sense. And I also believe I'm more empathic because of that. I, I can enter in, into any reality. So it doesn't matter how sad you are. I can feel you. I can feel your sadness. And I also feel how, how I can get you out of that sadness as well. It comes natural for me. Like, like I, I feel it and I'm like, okay, so you're in this sadness. This is your reality right now then I can get you out of that reality into a new reality. That's what I try to do in my book. And if people work one-on-one -on -one with me, if they do a transformational coaching session with me, I will show to them that their reality is not always the true reality. They're, they, we all live in an illusion. We're all living in an illusion. So if I do a one-on-one -on -one coaching, I will try to enter their illusion and try to let them know that this is an illusion and what you're seeing is not complete reality. And that will get them out of their reality into a better one, a, a more kinder one, a more compassionate reality. Did I answer all your questions that you had, Kevin? Like, did I answer it? I, I know I keep on talking. I'm very good at keep on talking. Oh, I could use a beer right now. I feel like it. I don't need it, but I feel like it. I desire a nice little cold drink. Maybe I should make some uh, tea. Actually, I'm gonna make some tea because my throat is getting... I will bring you into my living room, one moment, so you all can see where I live. <coughs> this is actually quite fun. Let's go this way. Oh. oh, definitely, Kevin, but for you, I will do it for free, man. And I don't believe that you need a session because you you are already you, your mind is already good. Your mind is already amazing. Uh, I'm gonna make some tea, and I just put you on a teapot. Oh, the tea is ready already. Let's make some tea. One thing I always love is tea because you're drinking Mother Nature right away. What? I'm not lying. So that's my partner, Sheila. I know I would like to drink beer sometimes, but I'm not a slave of beer. Let's do herb tea. What's this? This seems interesting. I love burgers. Honey, I just let you know, we are live to the world, huh? The world can see us. Oh, well, you can say anything you like, to be honest. All right, we are back into a meditation room. Oof. I want to show you where I put you a moment so you see where you are. Look, this is the chair I put you on. You're opposite of me. There we go. Okay, so how can we train ourselves not to be putting up projections all the time and be present with what actually is? So understand that your, your inner mind, it's, it's, it, it perceives your external world. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, we will talk later, huh? Amazing. So, so for you, Agnes uh, Holiday Jones, um, your outside world is a perception of your 
inner world. So if you believe that everybody's going to try to kill you, you are going to see that in reality as well. Because you believe that every person is going to try to hurt you. And what I experience in my own psychosis is that my, rea my, my inner reality actually became true. So I did call danger on myself. Like I was like projecting everything that tried to hurt me. I tried to project on other people. And I created that reality, which was very frightening. Because once you understand your law of attraction, when you, once you understand that everything is energy, and if you believe, keep believing in the negativity of it, you will definitely attract that negativity. And not only in, in a literally sense, but also figuratively. Um, the way you're going to talk, the way you look, the way you carry your body, the way you display yourself to other people, it will make them feel like they not trust you. So if you don't trust them, they don't trust you. And how you talk and how you look and how you behave will reflect that. So it becomes a never-ending circle because you start not believing them and then they do not believe in you and then, and then, and then it keeps on going like a ping-pong ball and then everybody is living in shit. Only people that have a strong mind do not believe in shit. They, they just, they, they observe the situation and like, that's pretty funny. Like, I see these people really hate each other. And I, I'm not, I'm like, why do they hate each other? I don't understand what's going on here. Which is sometimes why you, when you go to your friends and they're all drunk and they all had like connection building already. And, they, and then you're there without being drunk. And then like, oh, that's weird. Like, what are they talking about? It takes some time to get into the mode, you know? Um, for me, I always involve everybody. So if I'm drunk, for example, and you know it, I try to involve everybody into the experience. But some people are so stuck up in their minds that they, that they just keep projecting their mind. They keep saying, I don't trust this person. I don't trust this person. I don't trust this person. And then when they keep believing that, they will talk and walk and behave like it, which makes that other person also not trust that person which then becomes a never-ending loop, a never-ending loop of hate and, and disgust. But you are aware of many things already. What I believe is that many people just have to learn how to feel love in themselves so they don't need to get it from outside. So if you feel love for yourself, then you don't need anybody else to give you love. So you don't need to try to fill that hole with other people. If that makes sense. We love the world. We love the world, exactly. Does that answer your question in a way, uh, Holiday Jones? Or is there any other questions you might have? Ow. You want to see what is a projection and what is not? You know, I, I learned a lot about projections when I got hit by a car. I believed that everybody was against me. But once I was hit by a car, I suddenly see there's a lot of people that actually cared about me. Which really opened up my eyes. That's, that's my lesson of projection in a way. Because I decided not to hate the person that hit me with the car. I decided to forgive them. Most people, they would fight. They would fight like, oh... I got hit by a car, I should blame that person that hit me with the car. But maybe, you know, maybe that person was on their phone. They, they, they did something bad, of course. But if I keep having the negativity of that car, I will never heal. So I forgive that person that hit me with the car. Because maybe they did not see. Maybe they had, like, they had to go to the hospital because, yeah. It makes sense, but it's hard to practice. It makes a lot of sense. Like, if you love yourself, then you don't care what other people think about you. But I understand it takes a lot of practice as well. It takes a lot of practice to love yourself. Because there's so many things that you believe that are wrong with you. But just know that there's nothing wrong with you. Um, like I said before, uh, tradition is peer pressure from dead people. And they, those people, they lived in a time 
where things were different. They lived in a time of murder, where people were like, if you steal something, they cut off your hands. That's a different time than we're living in now. So everything, everything that you were taught in school, they say, um, like, do not steal. Well, of course you should not steal, it hurts people. But I'm just gonna call an example, do not kill. Back in those days, it was very normal to get killed. Because everybody had a knife to kill people with. Or everyone said, I kill you because God says so. And if everybody says that, then everybody would be killing each other. So you needed some rules, which were traditions. Traditions are rules. And some of them are good. I, I love some traditions that are just good for you. I love those traditions. But if there's tradition that involves killing stuff, not for me. So I, I will be releasing this video uh, on my page. I'm not gonna censor anything, even though this is like my first time. But people will always see this video, no matter what. So it could be that right now there's not many people live, but later on, people can watch this at their own pace. And they will be able to rewatch it. Like, and I'm not gonna put any fancy stuff in here. It's just gonna be question and answer. And the answer does not have to be the truth. It's just one truth. My truth. And maybe my truth will help you sometimes or not. I, I did get hit by a car. But it was the best thing that happened to me. If I did not get hit by that car, I would not be who I am right now. <laughs> and that sounds weird. But getting hit by that car showed me so much. Because I got hit by the car and I, I walked to work. And I was in so much pain. And I'm still in pain right now because I, it still affects me right now, the hit by the car. It still affects me, I still feel the pain. But it also showed me compassion. Because all the people that I thought didn't care about me suddenly cared about me. And I'm like, that's very interesting. They do care. Not because I was hurt, they actually just genuinely care about you because you just don't see it because your mind is just full of crap. Because your mind is full of crap most of the time, you don't see how much people love you. You don't see it. Because I was hit by the car where normal people would just lay on the road. I kept on walking. So most people, when they get hit by a car, they would just stay on the road, call the police. But I kept on walking, and the reason why I just kept on walking is because I thought nobody would care about me. I didn't, I didn't believe the police would care about me. I didn't believe the ambulance would take care of me. I just thought I have to keep on walking because I have to earn money. <laughs> Which is funny. It's really funny. And I really don't blame the person that hit me because that person probably walked, looked on their phone and they, they probably didn't see me. Uh, it was on a crosswalk, so I was completely in my right, and I looked at him, and, you know, he was driving slower, so I thought he would stop, but he did not stop, he just kept on going, and he kept on going over me, and it hurt, it really hurt, a lot, but for me, the lesson that I got from that is that compassion is real, and people really care about you, and by knowing that, that the world cares, I want to care for the world. And that's how true love begins. Just keep on caring. Um, but make sure that what you care for goes into the right things. So if you care for something, know that what you care for is for the right thing. And you decide what is right. You can decide as a person what is right. For me, I want to create a better world. So I'm not going to give care to people that hurt other people. I don't give care to them anymore. Uh, I'm not gonna give like the best way to care for people that you don't like is to teach them a lesson which is don't care and once they realize what they've done in their life once they realize how kind of what kind of bad things they did then you're able to forgive them and let them back into your life but they have to learn their lesson it is it is just how it is like I will never let any of my enemies 
not be welcome in my house. They can still join me in my house because, you know, they probably come to me to like get better. Like even if you if you murdered, even if you did very bad things in your past, your past is not present. Your your past is the past. If you're able to only do good things, if you choose to do good things from now on, then your life is still saved. You can still do good things. But if people keep like if people did bad things in the past and they they say to you that they're going to keep on doing bad things in the future, well, to me that sounds like they just this life is not for them and they have to like try to find it in another life. If they keep trying to hurt other people, that's not that's not normal. That's not normal behavior. A normal behavior is anything that does not hurt another person. That is normal behavior. So anything that does not hurt another person, that is normal behavior. That's the only rule I have. That's the only rule in my mind. Never harm another person. Never. And yeah, like anything you can put in that. If you harm another, then that's not good. That's if you if you physically or mentally harm another. Like mentally, that that is still something to debate it because if you say like uh, I don't believe in marriage, then you might be hurting your partner saying, "Oh, but I do believe in marriage, so you're hurting me." No, that's their that's their hurt, not your hurt. So if somebody forces you to marry them and you say, "No, I don't believe in marriage," then that is just like an, an, a difference of view, a difference of opinion, and it does not hurt anybody. Like. If 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 that per, if that if that other person is hurt, then it's their hurt, not your hurt. If you do not believe in marriage and you don't really want to marry, then either be, find a different relationship where they approve it, or yeah, exactly. How you 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 hit the nail there? Yes, it's all ignorance. Everything is ignorance. People don't know they're hurting you. People are un unaware that they're hurting you. That's why they, they, you need to forgive them. So if you believe in marriage because you were brought up as a child that marriage is the only thing in the world and people say, no, I don't want to marry. Do not blame the other person for not trying to marry you. They still love you. Is that that they're ignorant about your past. They don't know. They don't believe in marriage like you do. They love you and they don't feel like they have to give you a ring for it. I, I actually sacrificed myself to my to my partner because I gave her a ring. I don't believe in the ring, but for her, for her it's important. For her family, it's important. So I gave her a ring. It's a symbol of my love. But my love is never ending. I always loved her. I always love everybody, and I don't have to give her a ring to prove that. And she understands that this is my mind, but I just do it because for me it doesn't hurt that much. Like I can give the ring and it's fine. Hey Aziz, how you doing my man? I love you man, I missed you. I hope you are still working because I know you're doing the same work as me now. I'm also a night manager now. And I, you were a night manager when I last saw you, so thank you for joining me. Do you have any questions about for, uh, for me or about the book or anything else you just want to watch? Right now we were talking about, I don't even know what we're talking about. We were talking about forgiving others and about compassion and ignorance, of course. So Aziz, what we were talking about is that when people hurt you, um, you blame those other people for hurting you. But what you can also do for yourself to let them go is to forgive them for hurting you because they did not know what they were doing when they were hurting you. You can like forgive them for hurting you, which basically does not make it your problem anymore. It makes that their problem because you already let them go in your mind. They're not in your mind anymore. They're gone in your mind. So now they're just living with themselves being hurtful. We, we do run a lot of defensive programs. For me, my defensive program is just keep on talking. So whenever you are saying stuff to me, I just keep on talking. Like, I always try to make sense to everything out loud. So if you if you try to attack me, I'm like, why why are you trying to hurt me? And, and why do you try to hit me? I don't understand. Yeah. Like, I actually, it, 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 it actually helps a lot. Like, say, for example, that people try to rob you on the street and you're like, what are you, what is happening right now? Are you trying to rob me? And why do you want to rob me? Like, you want to take my money? I don't understand why you want to take my money. Why do you do that? If you start 
talking like that when you're being robbed by people they were like what the fuck is this crazy man doing but that's my defense mechanism I just keep asking why they do it like I don't understand why they try to rob me I'm, I'm a good person why would they want my money I work hard for it but I still take it I don't know we will find out maybe I'm actually gonna reach their heart they're like oh no one actually cared about me why does this person care about me why I want, their, want to steal their money that's pretty nice of them <laughs> oh man I can't wait to be robbed I see, want to see if it works. Actually, one time I actually lost my wallet uh, in a pretty heavy, like crazy city. And I am someone that's very neurotic about where's my wallet, where's my wallet. I check it every 30 seconds. I check where my wallet is at all times. It's just like a neurotic thing. It's like, like a little arti artistic little bit thing. But then I lost it and I was having a good time with a friend. In, 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 this was in Spain, in Marbella. And I lost it inside of like a, a Turkish diner, like a Turkish well, a burger place. It was very, very good burgers they had there. I'm not sure if it's Turkish. But like, like one hour later, I went there. It was still on the ground. It was still on the ground. My wallet was still there, which is very nice, which is very cool. And the only people that actually were able to steal my money were people that were actually people with white collars white collar thieves so they steal my money by telling me that if i invest in them i will earn a lot of money and i believe them those are the people that are real criminals they just take your money by good by talking they just they are very good at what they do this is their full-time job i don't blame them i mean this is the only way they know how to do things but i do hope one day they see the light and they see what they were doing and they see that they are robbing the life savings of so many people um, but it's not my job to make them see the light they need to find out for themselves what they're doing what, how they're hurting people they need to see it for themselves yeah. Aziz, is there anything you want to know about the book or about me or how life is or you can just talk about anything we still have 38 minutes to talk and I'm, actually, I'm enjoying this. I mean, one day I hope that we can do this with like more questions, but this is a good start. And this is me just trying to figure out how to be on, on video. So I'm learning how I can be on video. So I, if I can have to decipher what you're saying, if I go to my old house, my good. So what happened at your old house, Aziz? Is there something wrong with your old house? Because I'm trying to decipher your message, but I believe either you were distracted writing it or, or I have to try to decipher it. If I go to my old house, banlieue, my good H H H H H. It's, it's kind of sounds like a cat walked over your keyboard. So I can either guess what it means or we have to wait. There we go, I lost myself. I lost connection there, that was interesting. Is my camera good? Is my voice okay? So the purpose of this um, Q&A session is just to show who I am as a person. And if you buy the book, what will be in the book? So what will be in the book? Oh, so if you go to your old house, you have many robberies. I'm, I'm sorry that it happens in your neighborhood. I'm sorry that it's reality for you. My motivation for writing the book, very simple. Um, I lost my mind. I, I had a psychosis and a depression. And most people, they believe that life is over when that happens. But life does not, is not over when you have that. Life actually starts when you are waking up. 
and that's what happened to me. I had a psychosis and, and a depression. And I thought I lived inside of a very dark place, my mind. It was a very dark prison because everything just tried to kill me, um, inside and outside. I feel, felt that every, everything was against me. But I got out of there and I got out of there by myself, not by any gurus, not by any teachings, not by meditation. It was a part of it, but not all of it. And a lot of techniques that nobody else taught me how to do. So everything in my book is completely original. Uh, Aziz, I am, I, it's my book. I'm a book writer now. I am an author. I'm gonna release a book. So the book that I, I wrote uh, is for the people that are lost like me or were lost like me. Uh, people that had a depression or people that are had a psychosis or people that feel that their life is not have any meaning those people can read my book and they will realize that everything they heard in their life is a lie their whole life if it doesn't work for you then your life is a lie if if you are not happy then your life is a lie if you are happy then your life is maybe a lie but it will be a good lie so for me, the book is written for people that, that live in sadness and I'm going to teach them that what they live in is a lie. They, their, their sadness is not real. It doesn't matter where you are, if you're being tortured, if you are in prison, if you are living in an area where people keep robbing each other. You are not, your sadness is not reality. Your, your environment might be reality. Uh, their, your reality, like your environment that you're in might be a sad environment but you decide how you perceive the environment and any environment you can forgive you can forgive the people that torture you you can forgive the people that hurted you in your relationship you you can forgive the people that robbed you you can forgive the people that bullied you at school and once you're able to do that you understand that they only did it because they had a hole in themselves people do not bully you if they if they love you People don't bully when they know what love is, because why would you ever bully somebody that you love? They, they miss the love in themselves. And because they miss the love in themselves, that's why they bully you. And people that rob you, they, they, they're missing something in their life and they try to get it by hurting you. But they will always keep on trying to hurt people to fill that void inside of them because they always lack the main thing, which is love. Everything is love. Like the whole world is made of love. People get so much money. They are so rich. The only thing they get is money. Like if you're on an, on an island, if you're a billionaire, but you live on an island with no other people, why would you want to be a billionaire? You want to share with people. You want to share your wealth with people or you want to show off to people. So that's what all the people that are doing bad things in the world are just people that are trying to fill their heart with love they're just trying to get some kind of love somehow they 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 hurt people to get love they try to spend money to get love um that's that's their life that's their illusion that they live in and it's a bad illusion and if they read my book they will probably change their way they will probably stop hurting anything they will stop hurting mother earth they will start hurting their family, they will stop hurting their friends, they will stop hurting their enemies because their enemies are just their friends, they just don't know it yet, you know? Um, so that's basically what my book is about. It, it just, it's just a book full of love, a book full of thinking for yourself, knowing that nobody can tell you who, how to be you. Nobody can tell you how you can be you because the only person that knows what you, what's good for you is you. So many people that love you keep telling you things that, that is good for them, but it might not be good for you. So you have to always find your own path and what is good for you, and that, which my book will show you. That's why it's called You and I, A Path to Self-Healing. Uh, you and I is because I believe that you are never alone. So I am there for you to teach you how to think for yourself. And a path to self-healing, well, it, it's, it's, it's a path to healing yourself. So I show you a path where you can heal yourself, which is why it's called you and I, a path to self healing. It's just a path where you can heal yourself. It doesn't have to be the path, but I'm pretty sure that if you read my book, your mind will be like, 
boom. It will be like, what the fuck? Like, like, like your whole illusion will be broken. Your whole perception of life will be broken. And in a good way, not in a bad way, but in a good way. Um, and only if you choose to believe in my book, you know? I truly believe that um, many people before us tried. Jesus, Muhammad, Buddha, they are all people that saw the truth. And they all try to teach people in their own way. They try to show the truth to people. But people back then were ignorant as well. That's why they hang or that's why they put Jesus on the cross. Is because to, to many people he was talking like a witch. But people that understood what he was saying, those people started a religion. They started the religion of Christianity. And if he had Jesus here with us right now, we would not even believe him because there are so many Jesuses in the world right now. So many people are preaching something that that works. So many people are preaching their own religion. Like that's why we have so many cults, so many religious sects, so many different beliefs. Because everyone believes that their path is the right path. But that's not true. The only path is your path. Your path is the only truth. And nobody can tell you how to become a better you except for you. Like, I can tell you, like, uh, do good things and, and good things will happen to you. But what are good things? Like, what is your perception of good? Like, what I believe as good is that I have freedom to do anything I want. But if I have freedom to do anything I want, it could hurt other people with my freedom. Uh, my freedom actually to do what I want actually does not involve hurting anyone. Uh, which, which I believe is good. But many people would say... Oh, but, but cheating is bad. And being with other women than your partner is bad. I, I agree with that. If you don't talk about this with people, then you do something bad. If you're not truthful, if you're not telling the truth to people, then you do something bad. Because I believe the truth will set you free. If you have the truth that is always flowing out of sight of you, then your lies do never hurt you anymore. Because people will know what they're dealing with. People will know when, when you tell the truth that you don't have anything to hide anymore. And not having anything to hide anymore is such a great feeling. That's why I love being with my current partner, Sheila. Like, she knows all my secrets, like all of them. And it's amazing because I don't have to hide anything. I can just, like, I, sometimes I can just look at, at beautiful women on, my, like, uh, on TV. And I'm like, oh, look, a beautiful woman. And she's like, it's okay. She knows me who I am. It doesn't hurt her anymore because she knows who I am and she chooses to stay with me, which is, in my opinion, like we choose each other. We love to be with each other. And and, and that hurt that I had when just keeping lies, that, that just hurts so much. It's, it's, it's so, it's just hurts so much to keep lies in me. I can't do it. Like I will, I will keep the secrets of other people because the secrets of other people, it's their secrets. So I'm not, it's, not my, it's not my duty to tell the secrets of other people. But my own truth, I have to always keep telling the truth. I can't, I can't lie. Because if I lie, my heart gets heavier. And when my heart is heavy, it feels shitty. So I have to just always keep telling the truth. The truth will set you free. Even Jesus said that as well. Jesus said two things that really inspire me. Like, um, Father, forgive them because they don't know what they're doing. And Jesus also said... The truth will set you free. It makes sense. It makes a lot of sense to me. What he said, it just, it's just so brilliant. Same thing with, with, with the Buddha. He said, if you don't control your mind, someone else will. So if you don't control your own mind, someone else will control your mind. It just makes so much sense. It just makes so much sense. If you don't have your own thinking, then somebody else will just force their thinking upon you. And that's how many people get sad because they're living the lie of somebody else. They're living the life of somebody else. They don't live their own life. They just keep following people that want to hurt them or maybe not want to hurt them but believe that they're helping them. And they fall into the sect and they fall into a cult and they, they, they become something completely different than what they want to be. They, they become what they want you to be, not what you want to be. It's just, it's just so funny. Ooh, what's that? Somebody said the door. Oh, somebody else is getting it. Probably somebody owes some food. So, any questions? I, I was talking a lot again. My apologies. Am I more a preacher or am I more a listener? I'm trying to find out. 
Do you have any questions for me, Aziz, or, or Holiday Jones? Do you have any questions? I'm not sure what to talk about. I always, like, what I always do, I always react. Uh, I can also perceive, I can also talk. True, true. So as he's the title of the book is You and I, A Path to Self-Healing and it's going to be published very soon. Um, it's finished, but I just need to make it more pretty. So all the content is written and it, it is a finished book. It's completely finished. It's just that it needs some final touches, which I was hoping to get money for. So I have Kickstarter. It's ending in three days, but I'm probably not going to reach my goal. So I probably have to make it a low budget book. And then after my book is released, after more people like it, maybe I will release the book again how I want it to be released. But right now, because I see that my Kickstarter is not going to like get enough money, so my crowdfunding is not going to get enough money, I'm going to just release the book and when people buy more, I'm going to make it more pretty. So I'm going to have an edition two. Edition two is going to be more pretty. Um, and to answer your statement, Holiday Jones, it's true. A lot of life is pretending. It is true. But I'd rather pretend to have a life of compassion than I want to be in a life of, of hurt. So... I, I create a Disney world. Like how I how I would describe myself, I created a Disney world in my brain. I see everything as Disney. Like everything is just like all the bad people in Disney. They only were hurting. They were hurting because of like reasons. They, there's always love in every Disney story. There's love in the end. You know, it's always people always do bad things because they they have a lack of love. And this is true. Pretending is painful, so that's why you should stop pretending. Because the truth will set you free. Being able to be truthfully who you are. Like, this is me. And nobody else is going to take that away from me, who I am. That's the only thing you need to be free. Like, if you, tr if you, who you are does not hurt another person physically, then who, who should stop you from being who you are? That's, where, that's just the only thing that, 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 that is reality, is love. That is reality. People are trying to get it, and people are trying to steal it. People have it. I, there's an, like this analogy I have um, from porn stars. And everyone watches porn sometimes, even the most innocent people watch that. All those porn stars, they, give, they keep on giving all the time. They, they, sell, they give their body so other people are happy. Like they, they keep giving all the time and they have identity crisis later in life. They, they have identity crisis like, like, like I sold my body for the pleasure of others, but they are angels. Like they, they, they doing stuff that other people would not do because they, they, they make sure that people are happy. They are angels in a way. But people feel uncomfortable if you're not pretending like they are. People are scared of reality. Like, people are scared of other people because they're true. They, those people are just who they are. And I believe that people that hurt other people, they, they, they just, they lacking something. There's something missing in them. So I show compassion to them. I show them love. Like, I show, I'm, I'm feeling so sorry that you feel that way. I, I'm like... Do you understand that your words hurt other other people? Do you understand that your actions hurt other people? What are you trying to gain? Like, is there some is there some love that you're missing? Were you were you abused during as a child? Were you not given the love as a child that you should have been gotten? And are you trying to find the love in other people now, or are you trying to like learn or trying to test things on other people, see if that works, like they did with you, like the pain they gave you? Um, a lot of things come from childhood. A lot of things come from how you were growing up as a child. I do believe that. If if your parents were not able to do to protect you like they should, then then you become a person that could be very twisted. But that does not matter because if once you see who you really are, you will see that you're just pure light, you're pure love. 
And by giving love, you're able to receive love. It's so simple because if you start giving, you you it, you just give everything to your, from yourself to another, and that person is also just giving. Then that transforms energy. If I keep giving to you and you keep giving to me, without holding anything back, without like just completely surrender yourself, and I surrender myself to you, then that's the energy of both of you will come together and they create something so beautiful like the, the 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 power of pure love against pure love it's just it's just amazing that's that's pure creation that's pure creation and not pe many people can do that but it's such an amazing thing when you experience that pure true love that's just amazing hey Wenwei, welcome so i was just sharing to people like um, how how you can set yourself free and I mentioned that pure love can set everybody free uh, because if one person keeps giving unconditionally and the other person is also giving unconditionally you both the energies of you are able to create something beautiful um, does that answer your statement uh, Holiday Jones does it answer your question Hello, Wenwei. I'm so grateful that you're here. Thank you for inviting me to your home today. Thank you. I had such an uh, amazing insights at your place. It's, it's amazing. It's amazing. You, you are a very good mother and your children should be really proud of you, especially how you can just be yourself and how you teach them. It's amazing. And not many people have that. Not many people grow up like that. That's that's amazing that you are able to provide that safe space. Thank you, Holiday Jones. Uh, like I said to you, you are invited to my home in two days. So please, if you feel like you have to talk to me, you can always come by because in two days, I don't have anyone that can tell you they're not allowed to be in the house. Uh, just to give everyone else that's okay, Wenwei, that's fine. Uh, uh, this, this video will be uh, saved on my channel, so you can, you can just watch it anytime. Um, I was just saying that I live with six other people in this house, so I have to always be mindful of them as well. But once they're gone, I invite everybody to come over, of course. Everybody can come and see, say hello. Is there any questions for me from Wenwei, for Holiday Jones, or for the, anyone else watching the channel? If anyone wants to have a guided tour of my workspace, I can show you. Um, well, I might as well just do it because there's no questions right now. So, my life is based on self-education. I keep trying to improve myself, no matter how sad I get or how the world is against me, I can always keep on learning. That's a choice that I have. I have always a choice and this choice is just to keep gaining knowledge, knowledge, knowledge. So what I do is the following. I will show you my practice. Ooh, I still, my, my foot is really hurt from the car accident still. Uh, let me just show you my, what I do. So I definitely believe in chakra. So I definitely believe that um, chakras are real. And I also believe that if your energy is not good, it will make an imbalance in your body. So if right now my foot is really hurt, that's because there's a lesson in my foot somewhere. Um, I got hit by a car like four months ago and my foot is still hurting from that. So there's still something that I have to process and with energy healing, I'm able to do that. With meditation, I'm able to find the answer. And it's, it's amazing that if you buy this, it actually is quite useful because um, it also shows with which kind of voices you can use to heal yourself. Uh, here I have some stones. Um, I got a, this one from Egypt. It's beautiful. It's, it's uh, the scarab. Scarab is a sign of wisdom and granting wishes. These are my mala beads. Um, to show you like what, why mala beads are important is because when you chant your uh, mantra every time you chant your mantra you can count the mantra with the mala beat so you don't have to count in your mind you can just count with the mala beat 
and you have to do it 108 times because 108 is the distance from the sun to earth but it's also how many times earth fits inside of the sun and the same thing is the distance between earth and the moon so the distance between earth and the moon is 108 and distance between the sun and the earth is 108 and also the 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 how many times earth can fit inside of the sun is 108 so that is why they have such a meaning for 108 in Malabit because of the um, first of all the moon and the sun but also because of all the planets in our direct solar system there's also 108 like points in your body that are good for healing uh, I also have a pyramid the pyramid is for uh, placing my uh, like my uh, crystals in there I put my crystals in there to be uh, purified with good energy and it does not have to be reality but it works for me so for me it's reality I really believe that crystals heal you and I even have like this very expensive book about which crystals will heal you from what uh, it, it's 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 amazing because it's real it's it is real like it's not it's not it's not a joke anymore for me it's not it's not a superstition for me anymore because it really works Oh yeah, it's for you, Wenwei. See, I have the same one as you. <laughs> and um, yeah, here's my notepad. Basically, I just keep my notes on there. Um, here I have all my deepest desires in there. So the alchemy of self, which is actually quite nice. Here I put all my uh, goals in life and all my long-term goals. Thank you, Wenwei. We will see each other again soon. So I have like all my goals written down, uh, what I want to do, my vision for the next five years is in here. And I also have my morning routine in here. And I have my growth as a person from 10 years ago to who I am right now. So basically I wrote down everything for my life. I believe that you have to have a goal to go somewhere, but also do not forget where you are right now. Because we all live, we all live in our, inside our own illusions, but sometimes you also just need to know where to go, right? And I love being who I am. And I also want to help others. But there also needs to be a road where you're heading to. You have to have a goal. If you don't know where you're going, then you just keep on walking in circles. So I have a very big goal, very big dream. And I really believe in my dream. I really believe in my vision. And that's why I'm doing this. That's why I, ha why I have this session on the video. Is because I have such a big vision that I need others to help me achieve that vision. And that's why I keep trying to practice with Facebook Live, with camera, with writing, with uh, marketing. Because I want to reach the people that need my help the most. And I have something real for them. I have something that can really, really help them. I have, I have so many tools in my toolbox that I can give to others to help themselves. And if you will see it yourself. Like if you work with me, you can see what I have. You, you will see that your life can be transformed in such a beautiful way that that you don't never ever ever need anyone else to tell you what to do to make yourself feel better because you know what is good for you and that's that's what i that's basically what i teach i teach you to be your own guru uh, uh hopefully i think you were waiting when i said that i teach you to be your own master which is hard because once you're your own master nobody can teach you how to be yourself so no Jesus, no God can tell you what to do because you have to do it all by yourself. You have to walk a road that nobody ever walked before. You have to walk on the uncharted road. Nobody walked that road before. So that's scary. But once you have the tools that I have, then it doesn't have to be that scary anymore. It's just, it's just going to be beautiful. I'm not scared of me anymore. I'm scared. I'm not scared of everything, anything anymore. I'm just... I'm, I'm so awake right now. Everything is so beautiful. 
I, I just I, I can't imagine not feeling that anymore I can't imagine being sad anymore or being angry or anything like that very good the first step to learning to be yourself very very e easy first step the first step is to train your monkey mind train your monkey mind that's what your first step should be the monkey mind is monkey sees monkey does so if people keep trying to give you advice you keep believing in their advice you keep getting distracted all the time because you keep jumping from tree to tree to tree to tree if you practice the monkey mind you can choose for yourself what is good and what is bad for you so if you're experiencing a bad emotion you can look in your monkey mind and say this is a bad emotion and when you have a bad thinking you can tell your monkey this is bad thinking and once the monkey understands what is bad and what is good for you your monkey will be trained and it will keep giving you good things instead of bad things it will you would train them that this thinking is bad and this thinking is good very simple uh, it's it entails that you are able to like practice um, observing the mind when you know when you have a bad emotion you feel it you feel something bad inside of you so you feel that there's something hurting inside of you and you 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 feel a certain emotion with that and you don't like that emotion because a bad emotion is a bad emotion so the mo monkey mind is not aware of this because if you keep thinking um oh everybody hates me then the monkey or god will keep giving you stuff to hate because it believes that you want it but if you keep saying that i don't i like i want something beautiful i want to like get something today i want to get some love today and the monkey will be like okay so i give you feelings of love and he will send love your way um i know for people emotions could be in the body they could be um for me my mind works very differently so emotions is a feeling and I know what is a good feeling and I decided that I want to keep feeling that feeling forever and every time my mind keeps running away from that feeling I tell the mind no don't go away from that feeling stay in that feeling and monkey hears monkey does exactly you always keep believing you know what you yes you know what you're talking about you all like everything that you believe inside of you you will see so if you believe that everybody's trying to kill you you're going to see that everybody's trying to try to kill you it's 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 basically you're attracting it you're talking like it your mannerisms are about it people will see that you're lying people will understand that you're lying uh, they will see it because you act like it and if you if you are in a good mode if you know that everything happens to you for a reason and that you forgive everybody that hurts you people you will talk differently you will listen differently you will listen without judging which is very important so you listen without judging it's 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 something this is a result eh? i'm not talking about the cause this is all result so once you are in my modes you will just listen to people and 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 you judge things that are bad about it so if 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 if, you, if i hear something that is bad thinking i will try to help you but it's not my task to help you if you don't want any help so if if i hear you having a bad mind if or if or if you're stuck inside of a loop i can tell you to get out of that loop but it's up to you to decide if you want my help or not but what you said is true like your your mind always tries to find like a way to always prove that the mind is real so if you believe that 5g is caught like uh sorry corona is caused by 5g you will find the proof that corona is caused by 5g your mind will keep telling you yeah corona is 5g so that's the reason why corona exists and then you will keep trying to find proof of that until you find some kind of crazy proof that is real what you think and then okay congratulations you proved that corona is caused by 5g is that reality no it's not it is something that is real for you it is something that's real for you 
Uh, the same thing with Bill Gates and Corona. Like people think that Bill Gates created Corona so he can control the world. Interesting. That's really interesting. Uh, for me, I'm like, okay, I'm entertained. Uh, I'm not judging you for thinking that. It might be true. Maybe it's true. It could be. I just don't see why. I don't understand why. Like, why would he try to do that? That doesn't make sense. It really does not. So, I don't. I don't. I choose not to believe in that because I want to have a better world for myself. I choose that everybody is trying to make the world a better place. Everybody's trying to do that, but they just do it in different ways. And you always will find proof for what you believe in. You always find proof. If you believe that sadness is the best thing in the world, then you will find proof that sadness is the best thing in the world. I choose that I don't like sadness, so I will choose for happiness. And I will keep looking for things that make me happy. And be happy in itself. It makes sense for me. I'm just like, I don't want any sad stuff. That's why I don't watch the news. Like, why would I watch the news? There's only sadness on the news. I don't want to watch it. And that's their sadness, not my sadness. What they, they, they're pretending that like almost everybody in Holland is dying because of Corona, but only like a very small portion of this country has Corona. Only a very small portion, but they make it look like everybody is infected by Corona. It's not true. It's not reality. It's not reality. It's just like a few people that are not people you're ever going to see. They, they are infected by Corona. So they try to make you scared of something that is not reality. They try to make you scared of something that is not really scary to begin with. Which is very interesting. I mean, our whole economy is shut down because we are afraid. Corona is not the reason why the economy is shut down. We, we shut down the economy because we are afraid. And we also shut down the economy because of not being able to be responsible for ourselves which the government believes we're not responsible. So they believe that we're not going to wash our hands. They believe that we're not going to keep the one and a half distance. They believe that. And that's why they force us to do it. That's why they have the rules now. But if we as humans were just able to think for ourselves, then we would naturally already be able to function. We would just stay one and a half meters away from each other. But people are sometimes are ignorant and that's why you have to tell them what to do. Because they love to listen. They love to be sheep. People love to be sheeps. Do I validate or do I answer your question? Oh, they jumped. I'm really thankful for your questions. I'm really thankful for everybody here. Thank you for joining me on this call. It's, it's really amazing to be on this journey with me because this is my first time doing this. And it's really, it's really good. It's really great because this is how I learn. I have to do this. If I never did this, then I can never learn. If this video like does not make sense, then then I have to learn to make it make sense. So I just have to keep on trying, trying, trying until one day, instead of two people watching me now, I will be having 2,000 people. I believe that when you feel sadness with a certain kind of event in your life, that you understand that there's something wrong with that event and that you can change that event to something positive. Does that make sense to you, Holiday Jones? So I, I, I don't believe sadness is bad because actually sadness is a very good feeling sometimes. Um, but... With sadness, is like a detection, like a radar. Like if you feel sad about something, how can you make that sadness become happiness? Because I, 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 I don't, I don't want to feel sad all the time. I want to be feel happy all the time. Thank you, thank you. If I reach that amount of people, I will hire you as my assistant. I, I this is my promise to you because I believe that you are an amazing person. And if if I reach that kind of level that I'm going to have so many people I need help I need people that can help me and that believe in the mission so I will definitely hire your services if I'm able to get that big and you can keep I, you have it on video now so you can keep it you can keep me on it 
Um, so one day, if, if I do become like that, then you will know. Yes, feelings are definitely lessons. Um, if, if I did not have the sad feelings that I had in the past, I would not become the man like I am today. If I did not get hit by a car, I would not be the man that I am today. If I did not have my psychosis or depression, I would not be the man I am today. People would think, oh, poor him, that happened to him. Oh, so sad. Well, it is sad. It was really sad when it happened to me, but it did make me stronger in hindsight. And actually, when I got hit by the car, I was already like this after I got hit by the car. I was like, I forgive that person that hit me. He's an asshole, but I forgive him. It, it really fucking hurt. <laughs> it really hurt. Like, I, he was just driving there and he was just very slow and then boom, he hits me. And what can I do? I, I have to forgive him because there's nothing else that you can do about it because that's in the past. It's only about forgiveness. Uh, I hope he learned his lesson. I hope he will never hit, hit people with his car ever again. I hope he never drinks again uh, because he might be drunk. Or I hope he never watches his phone again. Uh, I hope he learned a lesson. Or she. I didn't know if it was a he or a she. But um, that's the power of forgiveness. It's very sad what happened. But yeah, I, I changed it to something that's happy. I, I saw compassion. And I saw people care for me uh, when I was injured. Like, I had to walk on crutches for so long. It hurts a lot. And it still hurts me right now. Four or four months later, I still have pain in my foot. But the grateful thing I'm actually grateful for is because this pain in my foot, it keeps me here. It keeps me in the now. It doesn't make me look in the past. It doesn't make me look in the future. It just keeps me here in this moment right now. I, right now, I feel the pain constantly. And feeling that pain actually f makes me happy sometimes as well because... I know that I'm alive, I feel pain, I'm alive, which is good. It's good to be back in reality sometimes, else you're just stuck in your mind. All right, is there any more questions? I think like one and a half, one and a half hours are, are, are gone. No, don't be, don't be sad for me. That's the point of all of this. Let me be sad for me. You don't have to be sad for me. Nobody has to have compassion for me. It's okay. Nobody has to have love. I already have enough love by myself. <laughs> but if you want to give some love, that's okay. I, I, I appreciate your love. I also have to learn how to receive. Thank you for, for, for showing compassion. I, I, I appreciate it. I also have to learn how to receive as well. So, thank you. That's actually a hard lesson, receiving. Like, how can you receive love that's always been a hard thing for me <laughs> all right so one and a half hours already that's amazing i'm so grateful that we are here i will take any final questions that there might be and then i'm gonna put this video on my website or on my page so everybody can watch it afterwards so i'm not gonna keep it a secret why not let us give you compassion? I feel like I don't deserve compassion. And the reason why I feel like I don't deserve it is because what I do, I already do with love. So you being happy is already something that makes me happy. And when people want to give me even more love, it, it feels weird for me. Because for me, giving love is just so natural. I believe so. Um, many people are saying I should earn money with this. I should earn money with helping people. And I still have problems with that because I, be I believe that giving love should be free. And that's why I I'm not able to take any money from people. But I have to be able to s live as well. Because if I continue like I am continuing right now, I will be living on the street in a few months. So I need to stop doing what I'm doing right now. And I need to actually ask money for my services because... If I keep giving it away for free, I'm going to live on the street <laughs> and I'm not able to help people anymore. And if I get more money, I'll be able to help people even more. Like if you give me a million euros, I will be going to Africa and I will definitely teach people how to fish. I will show in Africa how to make sure that you get clean drinking water. I will show them how to build a toilet that is eco-friendly. I, I will actually be there and do it with them. 
um, and I will actually film it so other people will see it. That's my like. If I have my first billion euros, I will do that. Like I will hire uh, some students, and I will take them to Africa. I will I will let them film everything that we do. I will like film the interviews that I have with the people that are hurting, and then together they will see that we are gonna install a toilet for them, or we're gonna like make a classroom for them. Um, like if you give me money that money will be well spent like if you if you donate your money to me that money will be it it will only go back to the earth like it will not stay with me it keeps on flowing it will keep on flowing and which is my problem because my girlfriend hates me for it because every time i get money i spend money <laughs> i always like the moment i get like something i always give it to a charity or i always give it to somebody else uh, to make them feel happy which is my problem because I keep spending, spending, spending. Many people are happy because I spend, but I also need to save money so I can do even more better things. So I still need to monetize all of this. And that's why I make these videos. I have to learn. I have to learn how to monetize, which is me being honest to you. Um, I need to earn money somehow. I do need to do it. All right, is there any final questions? I'm waiting if there's anything else. And otherwise, I will close the session. Perfect. Thank you all for coming. And let me just get this out there. I have to make a real way. Namaste. Thank you. Um, just to note, to let you know what Namaste means. Namaste means I bow to the divine you, which I bow to you. You are divine in your own way. You are godly in your own way. You create in your own way. So namaste. I bow to your divineness. And thank you for being here. We are co-creating a better world. And by you listening and by you being here, you are creating a better world. Slowly but surely. Thank you so much and have an amazing remainder of your night. I, I love what you did for me. Thank you. <laughs>